So I just finished painting the radiator cover that I made and I love it. So if you want to see how I did it, then keep on watching. The other thing is I haven't fixed it to the wall yet and I'll leave a video link to the bracket system that I'll be making. You monkey. So the first thing I had to do was pop to B&Q, buy some 18 millimeter MDF, but ask them to cut it down to 85 centimeters wide so I could fit it in my van. But I'm just gonna quickly show you what my plan was with all the measurements, but I wanted to make this one bigger if I ever wanted to put a radiator cover around my taller radiator in the same room. Also, after doing some research online, I'd noticed that a lot of radiator covers are five centimeters taller than the radiator itself. And Rob from Spend Time Save Money DIY kindly recommended a 100 mil vent at the bottom to suck in the cold air and a 30 mil vent at the top for the hot air to come out. And once I got home, I put the MDF on my saw horses and decided to take a lot of your advice and make a fence for my circular saw. This allowed me to make much quicker cuts without having to keep marking my measurement and then a measurement for the offset. And I'm now setting up a speed square to 15 centimeters and then align the fence to the pencil line I've created and cut with my circular saw. This really did make things so much quicker. Now, although I had a plan, what I struggled to work out is whether three or four strips would look better. So I'm getting a visual right now and I decided three was enough. But by the time I got to the sides, I'd accidentally ruined the fence and I cut them down to 19 centimeters wide with a straight edge. Note, I've designed it deep enough to hold a TV or maybe put it on the wall. It's good to double check your measurements, even if you have drawn plans. Measure twice, fail less often. 180. Yeah. But while I was here, I laid down the vertical ones and marked them with a pencil of which was left, middle, right, top and bottom. And I'd already cut my horizontal strips because they were all 15 centimetres wide. And now I'm cutting them all down to 68 centimetres. Luckily, the fence attachment on my circular saw made this really quick. So now I'm measuring where my vents are going to go. Remember, Robert recommended 100 millimetre at the bottom, 30 mil at the top. And then I'm lining up my horizontal pieces with those marks. I love it when things start to take shape. But because it's looking quite plain at the moment, I'm marking with little crosses on each side of where I wanted to go over it with a router to add some detail with a 45 degree chamfer router bit. In fact, the only areas I didn't add router detail were the very top and bottom of the uprights. And because it still looked quite plain, I really wanted to take the time to create some line details that I'd be really proud of. And for this, I'm using an 18 millimeter round core box router bit. I'll leave all the links to things below and I had it measured to this depth. And as you can see, to get these lines, I'd clamp some taller bits of wood around one of my uprights and I'd run my router plate alongside it so it wouldn't move about anywhere. And I'd run it up and then back down again so it was all even. And then I'd unclamp everything, pop it on the other side and repeat it again. And once I'd added details to all those three uprights, I lined everything up again with the vent pencil lines and I'm measuring and marking dead center of each horizontal strip for where I'm gonna add some biscuits. So I'd mark one end and match the pencil line on the vertical strips. And then I repeated that for every area where they needed to join up. And thanks so much to everyone on Facebook who recommended which one to buy. This isn't a sponsored video, by the way, but many of you recommended the Urbauer one. So I'd clamp one of my strips on top of a flat surface leaving me with enough room for the plate of the biscuit joiner to sit on. Then I'd line the center marking on it to the pencil mark that I made. And I'd set it to cut through 18 millimeter MDF and to cut a big enough slot for a number 20 biscuit. I noticed I took some of your advice and put my biscuit straight into an airtight container with some of those silica sachets. And I'm just testing to see if everything lined up. And I like how the biscuit cutter gives a slight amount of give so you can line everything up. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. Oh, I like that. I'd laid a rag down to catch any glue and I decided to work on sections with this because it was 1.8 meters long. And I'm laying them out on two 1200 mil sash clamps. I've always wanted a pair of these for other projects. And I'm using tight bond to wood glue for this because apparently it's really strong. And I'd put some glue in the first slots, pop the biscuits in, and then pop glue in the other side and just run along it, go over it with my finger, push it in, line it up with the marks. And before completely clamping it tight, I'm just double checking everything's lined up. 
and checking to see if the measurements were exactly the same diagonally. And I was gonna leave this overnight and then glue up the next one in the morning, but I hadn't realized I could leave it from 30 minutes to three hours before I unclamped it. So off camera, I just did the rest and this is what it looked like the next morning. It was very sturdy. And now that I've learned that process, attaching the sides was a piece of cake. I knew you'd come here if I'm at dog level. <laughs> what we're doing now is we're lining up the side panel at the back and then we're going to draw our lines for biscuit joints. Hands, come on. Away. No one can see what I'm doing. Garden, garden, garden away. Works every time. And for these sides, I'm adding four biscuits. Although I did have to make the pencil lines longer so I could actually see them and line it up properly. And I'd use my speed square to get the perfect right angles while I clamped them and left them to set. Another tip that I particularly liked from Rob's video is the angle brackets. You could also use dowel pins instead as featured in Average Joe's Joinery's version. I'll leave a link to that video as well. So I'm pre-drilling holes and attaching them with screws. But for the top, I wanted a one and a half centimeter overlap all the way around. And I've clamped my original off cut after B&Q cut it down for me onto my saw horses and used the fence on my circular saw to get this cut right. And I've now got the 45 degree chamfer router bit. So I'm going over the sides and the front section for the finished look that I wanted. And then I laid it on the floor, sat the radiator cover on top, don't forget this whole thing is upside down, and fixed it with more screws. Yay! <laughs> and now I'm measuring the internal width so I can cut down an MDF screen. This is actually 600 mil deep, by 1800 mil and it's four millimeter thick. But I really struggled to find this at all mainstream DIY stores and I had to travel a little bit further to get it. So just to help anyone who's doing research on this, please comment below if you know of anywhere that normally stocks it. So after measuring and marking it to about 1700 millimeters, I took it outside and just carefully cut it with a jigsaw. and evenly measured where I wanted it to go and pre-drilled and screwed it down. Right, let's see what it looks like before we scribe it. Wow, it's big, but it's a very strong focal point. I'm impressed. I think this is left to go because I don't think they're doing the radiator cover any favors. It's a bit much. And then I could either cut out a section of skirting board or scribe the back of the unit. And I went for scribing. And I cheated by drawing around an offcut of skirting board. But if you can't use this method, I'll leave a great video below that should help you. And I carefully cut out some of it with a jigsaw. You have to be so careful. And I'd alternate with a handsaw and a rasp. I know I should really buy a coping saw. And then I brushed over it with quick drying MDF sealer. It seems to be debatable of whether this is worth it, so I'd love to know your thoughts below, actually. I was originally just going to use PVA solution, but after seeing Average Joe's Joinery use this, I thought, oh, maybe I should be using that, and it does have good reviews. And after it was touch dry within half an hour, I gave it two coats of Dulux Trades Satin Wood in pure, brilliant white to give it a slight gloss so it would pop when I do decide to paint the wall a strong colour. So this job costs about £50 for the materials, but if you've got more than one radiator cover, then it might be worth just investing in the tools just to save money in the long run. But I'm really happy with how this turned out. So uh, yeah, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll catch you in my next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.